In the following video, I wanted to talk about how we can compute the convolution. So we have two functions here. Um, we have f of t is equal to the unit step function and h of t is equal to e to the negative t multiplied by the unit step function. So first let's just see what this is graphically. We have that h of t is one here and it's, it's decaying and it's not defined behind the y-axis. So this is h of t. And then for u of t, we just have a unit step function, also not defined behind the y axis. So this is f of t. So when we compute the convolution of f of t with h of t, we use the following integral. We do the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of tau multiplied by h of t minus tau d tau. Now something really cool about convolution is that um, the convolution of f of t and h of t is equal to the convolution of h of t and f of t. So this same integral can be rewritten as the integral from negative infinity to infinity of h of tau multiplied by f of t minus tau d tau. And it's oftentimes advantageous to put the um, more complicated function in this position where there's no um, time scaling or um, shifting, right? So we put the, the simpler function, the unit step function f of t into this position here. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and plug in the values here. We have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of h of tau, so e to the negative tau, u of tau, multiplied by f of t minus tau, so u of t minus tau, d tau. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, a couple things that we can do is update our bounds of integration because we have these unit step functions involved. The reason this is um, advantageous is because um, the unit step function for the most part is equal to zero, so that would throw away part of the integration. So when is this equal to one? u of tau equals one, when tau is greater than or equal to zero, right? And it's zero otherwise. So now what we can do is we can throw out everything um, for the tau bounds that are less than zero. So we can update our integration bounds to be zero to infinity, right? Of e to the negative tau and u of tau goes away because u of tau is just one for t for tau greater than zero, right? And then we have this is multiplied by u of t minus tau, d tau. Now what can we do here? We can follow a similar process to update our integration bounds. We have u of t minus tau equals one for t minus tau is greater than or equal to zero, right? What we can do is we can move this to the other side. We get tau is less than or equal to t, um, and so it's one for that value and zero otherwise. So again, we can update our integration bounds and we get the integral from zero to t of e to the negative tau d tau. And this is the integration that we can solve. Uh, we just get negative e to the negative tau evaluated from zero to t, which equals negative e to the negative t minus negative e to the negative zero this one goes to one, these two minuses become a plus, and we get one minus e to the negative t, but we're not quite done yet because we have to acknowledge the fact that our two inputs were given for um, t greater than or equal to zero, so our output should also only be valid for that range, right? And to say that fancily, we use the unit step function. Here we get one minus e to the negative t multiplied by the unit step function as the answer to the convolution of f and h. And this is actually really fundamental to the study of linear time invariant systems, because if we know h of t, which is often described as the impulse response, and I like to think of the impulse response as what happens to a system if you smack it with a hammer, right? So if you had a car, smacking it with a hammer if we're like testing the um, suspension system, 
would be like, okay, we have this crazy bump in the road. This is like a strong impulse. And if we're like looking at the suspension system, we can look at what the output is based on this input response, based on this impulse. And we get our output, which is the impulse response. And if we define this as a linear time invariant system, then with that impulse response, we can know how this car is behaving if it's driving on any sort of road, right? And we could define that as like f of t. If we convolve f of t and h of t, convolved with h of t, we get y of t, the output. And this is really cool because we could give any input after we know the impulse response to find the output with this convolution. Pretty cool stuff. Thank you for watching.